So the study is not without uh, its critics, even some scientists saying the language is, is really too dire, but the evidence in this report doubles what was there in 2007. The next report coming out next month will talk about how to mitigate. All right, Johanna, thank you very much. You're welcome. There was a time when a report like this might lead to a lot of significant debate among leading scientists about whether it was accurate or not. Not so much this time around. Maybe some debate, as Johanna said, about the degree of, of the predictions, but not the basic science behind it. But to what extent are people, those of you watching, for example, going to change the way you deal with things based on this report? To talk about that, we've uh, asked Kai Chan to join us. He is an associate professor at UBC's Institute for Resources, Environment, and Stability. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, you've heard these kinds of reports before. Are we seeing enough change on the part of individuals? Well, not yet, no. I think it's going to be, it's going to take a little bit more, you know. I mean, Individuals have been distracted by all the efforts of the climate change deniers and hopefully as momentum grows that this really is an important issue, not an, only an environmental issue, but also a social issue, hopefully things will change. So we saw Superstorm Sandy, as uh, Johanna mentioned, a lot of people thought that might spur people to make changes. We've seen reports like this and now we have this, the language of this report in particular. Uh, do you think that tomorrow, next week, next month, people are going to start making fundamental changes in the way they live? I wish. You know, <laughs> if only it were that simple. No, I don't think that's going to happen like that. It takes a lot of things coming together for people to change their behaviors. And some of the behaviors that we're talking about are fundamental to people's existence. You know, things like driving their cars and flying to see their families. People can't change those things overnight. So it's going to take the environmental community working with academics in order to find ways to package changes to people's lives that are easy and attractive and viable for them. And I think that's, gonna, that's still got to happen. We were talking about this at work here today, and, and we were talking about anti-smoking attitudes, people using seatbelts, not drinking and driving. We have seen some very significant shifts in public behavior over the last 10 or 20 years. You must have thought about this before. You know, specifically, what sort of things do you think you and your colleagues have to do to achieve those kinds of changes when it comes to, to the climate? I think about this every day, you know, for most of the day. It takes several things. Like I said, one is getting a certain kind of an agreement that, that goes beyond the environmental community and beyond the research community. And I think it's going to take working with industry. I mean, as long as the environmentalists are seen as on the other side of the kinds of industries that power our economy, it's going to be a really hard sell for people to jump whole hog onto a actions that they think are going to put those industries at risk. So I think we really have to work more closely with them to find solutions that work within their limits, but also challenge the way they're doing things. Well, it's really nice talking to you. Hopefully we can continue this conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Kai Chan is an associate professor at UBC with the Institute of Resources, Environment and Sustainability.